I'm going to show you the tools I use as a game developer and not just that, I will reveal my full workflow process in this video. I don't use any of these productivity tools anymore, but not for the reason you might be thinking. This is what my everyday task management looks like and after using this system, I'm never going back to using Notion or Trello again. You will be surprised how powerful mind maps are for task management after seeing how I use them in my game dev workflow. And as a bonus, I'll teach you how to make these super smooth animations, which isn't directly related to game development, but if you're thinking of posting devlogs like me, it will come in handy. It's going to blow your mind how simple it is to make them. Anyways, I'm Jamie and I'm a game developer and currently working on a cozy pixel art game about a cat. I've always been using mind maps for studying or planning, so naturally I started to use mind maps for planning out my dev projects and found that mind maps are such a good fit for task management for solo dev projects. I'll explain why this is with an example. Let's say your next task is to implement enemy mechanics. That's a pretty broad task and you might struggle to figure out where to start. A common approach would be breaking the task down into smaller ones like this. Now each task feels a bit more tangible but not enough. If you look at this task, it's still broad and difficult to know where to start. In this case, you can break the task down a bit further and further until you come to a point where you know exactly what to execute. After this process, you'll get a list of executable tasks you feel comfortable doing. And while executing, whenever you get stuck on a certain task, there is no need to worry. Just break them further down to a point where you know exactly what to type into your code editor. After the items are complete, you can just delete the tasks or cross them off. The level of flexibility of managing tasks with this system is insane. I like this method because it doesn't overcomplicate your workflow. Nowadays, there are just so many products being advertised to you. It's so easy to introduce new tools into your workflow, which is just going to be distracting. For the mind maps, you can just use any tool. Even a simple pen and paper would also work fine. In my case, I'm using a tool called Miro. In Miro, there is this big board and you just chuck everything on that board as organized or as messy as you like. I use Miro for task management, planning and brainstorming, which is good because I want to minimize the number of tools I use. In my workflow, Miro would be my first step of planning a feature. If the feature is something worth documenting, I would update my game design document and then I will execute the tasks one by one in Godot, which is the heart of my game dev project. I like Godot because it's very lightweight and it's free and open source. My current project originally started with Unity, but I made the switch to Godot and it didn't take such a steep learning curve. The node and scene based architecture in Godot is very intuitive and easy to understand. Everything in the game is made up with nodes. And when the game is running, you can think of it as a giant tree of nodes that would appear and vanish. I just love how the architecture of the game engine is uniform in this way. For code editing, a lot of people use VS Code, but I enjoy using the built-in code editor, which has less features compared to VS Code, but I put priority on making my workflow simple. And it's a blessing that there is a built-in code editor that beautifully integrates with the engine and makes debugging so easy. For version control, I use GitHub Desktop for everyday commits and would only have to open up the command line tool when I need to do some serious damage control. You can't compare Godot with other game engines at this time and I admit that there is a lot to improve, but I believe in Godot's potential in the long run and I'm just happy that I found a game engine I really like. For the artwork related tasks, I use Aceprite. I bought this tool on Steam for 28 Australian dollars, which would be around 20 US dollars, but you can use it for free if you compile it yourself. To use it for free, go to the Aceprite GitHub repo and follow the installation document. I'm not an expert at pixel art and chose this art style because I thought it would be easy to learn, but pixel art was not as easy as I thought and I'm still not very good at it, so I'm not the best person to talk to when it comes to pixel art, or just art in general. I mostly use Aceprite to make modifications to assets that I downloaded for my game. Sometimes I only need to make small changes so that the assets blend into the game, but in some cases I need to make some major changes. For example, my game needed a beaver, but the asset pack that I downloaded didn't include a beaver, so I had to change this poor little otter into a beaver. Actually, before the otter, I tried to turn a naked mole rat into a beaver, but that didn't turn out as I wished and frankly was a little surprised to see what I created. I think documenting or sharing updates on social media is a must for indie devs and think it's worth mentioning about it in my workflow. 
Whenever I complete a task that I think is presentable, I will make a screen recording with OBS and collect the clips. Later on, these clips would be used as resources when I edit my videos in Adobe Premiere Pro. Sometimes my videos would need animations. To make the animations for my videos, I use Keynote animations. Keynote is kind of like PowerPoint, but for macOS. My secret is to use magic move transitions in Keynote. If you're using PowerPoint, the morph transition can do the same thing. You first make the before slide. So this is what the animation is going to look like when it starts. And then duplicate that slide as an after slide and make the changes you want to make. Then you choose magic move as a transition and you've got yourself some smooth looking animations. It's so simple. You can also add additional animations in between the slides after you put everything together as a deck just export it as video. After that, you can use it as a resource in your video editing software. All the animations you've seen in this video is actually made like this. This is not just useful for making YouTube videos, but just a handy tip for leveling up your presentation in general, especially when you want to explain complex concepts. Subscribe for more videos and I hope this was helpful. Bye.